what are the primary causes of swallowing problems? And this, I think, summarizes what we've discussed during this course. It the number one would be increased resistance to bolus passage due to reduced pharyngeal peristalsis, stricture, other structural abnormalities, and in many patients, reduced lingual propulsion, the necessary push to move material through the neopharynx. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about what are your goals for intervention. Now, should we perform a postoperative radiographic assessment? This is going to vary from facility to facility, and it's going to, again, depend on your physician's method of practicing. Is there a, uh, a care plan? Is there a standard practice of um, working together as a team? But if the patient seems to be handling the secretions well, there's no concern about uh, breakdown, and he's handling the thin liquids, this is probably something that is not needed. Um, give the patient a little bit of time, a tincture of time to heal and start to recover. Again, the observations that you've made, how are they handling their oral secretions and clear liquids? And once the patient is handling the secretions and liquids for a day or two, you can talk to the physician. Is it okay if we advance the patient on up to a puree diet, a soft diet? But I do want to emphasize it's very, very important to keep your eyes and ears open and communicate with the physician. Ask him what their plan is document this in the chart, you're working together and you're informing the patient and his or her family. Now, if an instrumental assessment is indicated, let's talk about it. Should it be a barium swallow, um, which incorporates an esophageal leak study, which we're going to discuss versus our video fluoroscopic swallow study? If the doctor requests a barium swallow, ask him or her what her, his hypothesis is. If the patient is having postoperative swallowing problems, you know, you might talk to the physician, well, I don't know if an, uh, a barium swallow is indicated. I think the problem may be swelling up in the hypopharynx. We do, do we want to give the patient all that barium to look at the esophagus? But if they want to rule out a pharyngocutaneous fistula, a barium swallow, basically referred to as an esophageal leak study, is warranted. If, again, an esophageal leak study is performed, you can also talk to the physician to see if you can assess the patient for his postoperative swallow function and structure with a little bit of barium. But I'll talk about why we always want to do our video fluoroscopic swallow study after the esophageal leak study. So again, it's very important that we as speech language pathologists have a thorough understanding of the postlaryngectomy anatomy and its impact on swallowing function. And the reason I say this is many radiologists may not see a large population of total laryngectomies, either in practice or get much of this covered in their training. I can't tell you over the years how many patients um, how many radiologists have said to me, oh, did the patient aspirate or not? There I would gently tell them, explain to them about the anatomy. And generally, I would like to do that at the time before we start the study to go over the anatomy, what we're expecting, and what, what is the scope and purpose of the study. It's not just a regular barium swallow. It's an esophageal leak study. So let's look at that a little bit more closely. So what is an esophageal leak study? 
it's performed by the radiologist to identify any internal fistula tract, sinus tracts, um, when the patient has undergone extensive surgery, such as um, they require a wide field laryngectomy or they've had a secondary laryngectomy or if poor wound healing is suspected. And here in this picture that you can see, this is an AP view. The patient has been given a little contrast and I'll talk about the contrast that is given in the AP view. And you can see that contrast is extruding through the sinus tract out to the neck. And this would correspond to what we saw in the slide of the patient that had the blue dye coming out their neck. So again, the esophagram leak study is conducted by the radiologist. So I feel it's very important that we're there at the time of the esophageal leak study. We're not going to bill for it, but to make sure that the patient is safe and that the appropriate procedure is being conducted. But I would often, I would always generally talk and discuss with the radiologist what type of contrast is to be used and why we're doing it. So again, if poor wound healing is suspected or to rule out the sinus tract, it can be part of our post-operative protocol to guide oral intake. So what type of contrast is used? It's, a, it's not our typical barium. It's a water-soluble contrast, and some of the names of it are gastrographin, omnipaque, or visipaque. See what your facility has. And with this type of contrast, it disperses pretty quickly, um, but it's reabsorbed into the soft tissues of the neck versus if we give the patient barium and there is a leak, that's going to stay in those soft tissues forever. So it's very important that the right type of contrast is used. 